the whole idea of engaging with a financial services provider for the first time, what are they asking you to provide to them in terms of um, who you are, all of the information about you, um, all of that can be, uh, you know, somewhat friction filled. Sometimes it can actually help to build trust. Mm-hmm. Um, but Corey, just kind of directing this at you, when you and I first talked about this, um, I was giving you the example of a provider here in Ireland who uh, managed to get me completely onboarded on a Sunday uh, into a, a, a brokerage account, which was, you know, fully digital. Um, and it was, you know, you made the comment, Corey, of this goes way beyond e-signatures, right? There's so much more to this whole digital engagement with a customer, whether it's again, an individual or institutional um, at the very first instance of your contact with them. Um, and it's not just about, you know, can we, we make all of these forms digitized, which is different than digitalized, but um, you know, uh, the, the whole process around uh, identifying customers. Um, can you uh, share some of your ideas on that? Uh, yeah. So first and foremost, this is a relationship business, right? So if, if, if you're not feeling it, whether it's a relationship with an app or, you know, a person or combination thereof, it, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, and, you know, kind of, you know, filling in, you know, s- some of the holes there when we talk about, you know, kind of backing up a little bit. Millennial, just because they're a millennial doesn't necessarily mean that I just want to have a relationship with my phone and I don't ever expect any type of contact with an advisor ever. That is, that is not true. What they want is seeing their parents. The only way I could get in contact with an advisor was like on the phone or going to see them. And that's not the relationship they want to have, but they still want to know that there's there's this advisor team of some kind, be, you know, behind them where I still have this access, but I still want to spend the majority of my time through an app, through text. And when I really need you, I want to do like one of these, um, you know, like a, um, you know, a zoom or an in-person meeting when, when, when it, when it's necessary, when it's deemed necessary. So, you know, that's, that's what we're seeing um, in, in terms of, you know, this omni-channel component where we just need to, give more ways to interact with folks instead of just that singular way. Um, I think think you're right on the money. I mean, it's that high tech, high touch stuff that, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, er everyone's looking for kind of in a post COVID kind of world. I mean, we're now conditioned that it's, it's actually not too bad. You know, my, my, my daughter, uh, who's, you know, soon to be 24 has got a relationship with Raymond James based on my recommendation, right. As a, as a father, and, you know, but she still, as a, you know, a young millennial still wants to have that personal engagement. She's got an IRA uh, conversion uh, call either today, or maybe it was yesterday that is involving, you know, physical contact, picking up the phone or doing the zoom. I had, a, I had a zoom call last week just to do my annual financial checkup to see if I needed to, you know, change my asset mix, you know, and it's like second nature now. It's like, yeah, pop on a zoom, you know, we'll, we'll do it. The, the people that are really winning at this game understand that there's a ton of friction out there and there's a ton of, you know, it, it, that fundamentally investing, managing your day-to-day finances is, is a, a chore and, and fundamentally banking sucks, right? I mean, and the ones that are making it suck less are the ones that are going to make it win, you know, to Pete's point, you know, on a Sunday, being able to be onboarded for a brokerage that you can't do that with, uh, you know, here in the States pretty easily. It's just not going to happen. It's going to be a robo advisor that could probably do it, but it's not going to be a Raymond James or one of the traditional shops. So the ones that are reinventing the experience, they're the ones that are going to really win this. Yeah. Well, that, that one was, you know, that was interactive brokers here and that was paled in comparison to me opening up a, a pension account where my financial advisor, I had to go meet him, um, at the parking lot of a closed pub, between our two houses so that I could sign a small forest of documents on the hood of his car, or sorry, on the bonnet of his car, as we say here in Ireland. So that needs to happen where a lot of these traditional wealth firms are being dragged into this um, self-service component because their huge fear, and you hear it all the time, is like, well, I don't want my clients to be able to withdraw money without me knowing. I don't want my clients to be able to see access because all that does is, is create more questions and more headache for me. But People want to be involved. They want to be engaged in their finances and they expect you to coach them and teach them along the way. 
And those make better clients because all of a sudden you have just a much tighter bond with this relationship. If you just like let go a little bit and give people like a little bit of autonomy uh, and a lot of access so, so they can, you know, be in a sense coached up. They want to learn and be engaged with you, which again, makes everyone makes better decisions that way. Cause they're so much, they're, 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 they're just much more educated in terms of why we're doing something. And, and there's, there's no second guessing because they know now. So that, that's extremely I think, important. Uh, I think, I think I, I'd agree with that. Like based on my experience in the industry that the best wealth, advisors wealth managers are the ones that are educating their clients the whole mm-hmm. time on every aspect of their of their their estate basically and they take the time to sit down and you know go through everything and um you know they they're they're experts in their field and i think that allows them to build deeper levels of trust and understanding as to where they want to go and um i think it's still very hard to do that you know with technology to coach somebody through the you know ins and outs of your retirement using an app you can have this investing on autopilot idea but like nobody will tell you about how you should draw down your pension the tax implications of it you know how you should you know tie that in with your will very there's only aspects of you know um you know the the automation can actually take care of that you know the rest of it i think requires human intervention yeah but there's there's more than just saving eight percent it's where you're saving it you know you have you have your three taxable bucket you know it's it's like what is your combination to for sure i I would say get your most efficient outcome um which, which is very important and that requires Mm-hmm. A machine can't really do that for you. Um, but I, th- I think there are a lot of these, you know, app-based wealth management solutions are making inroads in other areas, such mm-hmm. as, you know, uh, you know, things like these roundup, you know, functions. I don't know if you've seen that with, you know, uh, with Acorn in, in the US, you have it well simple in, in, in Canada as well. You buy something and it invests like uh, it rounds up, you know, 70 cents to a dollar and then invest that into your RSP or, or tax-free savings account or one of the equivalent in the US. I think that's quite clever and we're seeing more of that. That's something that an advisor, an individual can't do. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that where, you know, this kind of wealth space is going to start to creep into all parts of our lives where, you know, they're, they'll, you know, you'll get like tax back on certain things and they'll donate money to charities and they'll start kind of come up with clever ways to make, make their applications more sticky, more relevant and those yeah. are the sorts of things that I guess the millennial generation really appreciates. So we're going to see. Yeah, they're, they're, they're chipping away at it. I mean, there's this thing occurring in the retail banking side called the deposit displacement. And, you know, the betterments of the world, some of the health savings accounts of the world, you know, slowly but surely are moving hundreds of billions of dollars, you know, from the retail banking ecosystem into these, you know, these, these neobanks and these fintechs. And, mm-hmm. and now, you know, the betterments of the world who, you know, not too long ago rolled out a full-fledged checking account, uh, now you got Square. You know, Square is going to roll out a full-fledged retail banking product as well as a small business product. That's going to take real market share. And and the kind of engagement that a millennial wants, or you know, even the younger generation wants, are much different than you know what the old people like like me want. <laughs> you know, you don't sell yourself short there, Brian. You're doing yeah, all I'm right. Still, I'm still pretty digital. There's You're no doing doubt all about right. it. But I like that high tech, high touch. I like the idea of being able to talk to someone when I need to. It, I view my financial advisor as OnStar, right? So it, if I'm driving along and my car falls off the road, I know I can get help by pushing OnStar. If I'm, right. if I'm going about investing, managing my money, I need help. I've got a button to push and it's called Raymond James for me. And, and I think that the market wants that. And I think there's always going to be a place for it. Absolutely. And I heard Angela Strange from A16Z say on a podcast the other day, where's the Google, where's the Google maps of my money, right? Um, well, how do one. I, how do I just get on hit go and boom, by the time I'm 65, I've kind of followed all the way through. Mm-hmm.